everybody, welcome to season four of I Can Do That. I'm David Lyle. And I'm Andrew Zellner. In the previous seasons of I Can Do That, we've uh, used a very basic toolkit showing you how to build simple, easy to follow along projects using home center materials. Um, we're not doing any complicated joinery. We're using basic techniques and it's really about teaching anyone how to become a woodworker. Um, even me. Even you, David. <laughs> Good. <laughs> And uh, we've used a pretty basic toolkit so far, but um, in this season, we're going to be introducing something new. Why don't you show him? It's, it's over there. He's gotta bring it in, right. but it's an exciting new detail. Wait for this, wait for it. A table saw! <laughs> yeah, a table saw! <laughs> so uh, we asked our readers, you know, uh, and our viewers, yeah. what tools they have and have at their disposal, and we found that a lot of people do have a table saw, not necessarily a full-size cabinet saw, but one of these portable contractor models. And it takes your woodworking to the next level. With this table saw, we're going to be able to rip longer stock, create some square edges on our materials, and just go to the next level with our furniture projects. So we're going to teach you some techniques, we're going to show you some jigs that are commonly used on the table saw, and we have a lot in store for you. So stay tuned. So before we plug in our table saw and start cutting, we should understand a few things about how it works. First of all, uh, you should know that most table saws on the market that you buy new today pretty much all function the same. You've got a fixed blade spinning in a table. A table saw. saw. There are a bunch of uh, different levels of table saws out there. Um, you can pick them up for you know, under a couple hundred bucks all the way up to yeah. thousands and thousands of dollars when you're getting into high-end cabinet saws. This is a mid-range saw, about 500 bucks. Uh, we got it from the home center. Um, so when you're cutting wood, you need to think about how you're cutting it. If you're cutting it with the grain, that's your rip cut. If you're cutting it across the grain, that's your cross cut. Cross cut. <laughs> Uh, with plywood, you're pretty much doing both of those all the time. Yeah. Um, the uh, big thing to know about a table saw and why I love table saws so much is they make it easy to do repeatable, accurate cuts. Right. So for instance, if you're going to rip a bunch of wood to the same width, you've got your fence here, which is set up parallel to the blade, and you can rip a bunch of material to the same width very easily, very repeatable, right. very accurate. So last season, we had to use a circular saw with a jig that went all the way across the piece. Here, we have one fence and one blade, and we feed the piece through. Now, we also have a miter gauge. This comes with all table saws uh, of varying quality. Uh, this is the one that came with it, and you'll see an array of numbers on here. This lets you set a degree to which you want to cross-cut your piece. So could I cut a 45? Uh, you may. I will just set this to 45, just for you, Andrew, and we feed this way. So one thing you should know about using the miter gauge is you never want to butt your material up against your fence Correct. when you're cutting with your miter gauge. Now, uh, you know, speaking of safety, uh, safety is a very important topic when you're dealing with a table saw. Um, it's one of the most dangerous tools in the shop. But with a little bit of knowledge, you can use it safely and efficiently every day. The first thing you should know about table saw safety. Your guard should only be removed if you're making a non-through cut or a dado cut, which is basically a big non-through cut. Um, the guard on this table saw is a split European style guard. What Europe, makes it European? Europe was way ahead of the States as sure. far as safety goes. <laughs> Um, they developed this style, it works really well, and it fits all kinds of different table saws. Um, so the guard has independent shields left and right. So for instance, if you were only making a small cut off of a piece of wood, only one side of the shield goes up, keeping you safe on that other side. And then my fingers don't get in there. Um, also, the guard moves up and down with the blade as the blade moves up and down, which is also really important. Um, Another feature that you'll see on the back of the guard uh, that's attached to the riving knife are these uh, spring-loaded pawls. These are anti-kickback pawls. So as you feed your piece through, there is potential for your piece to be kicked back. 
Uh, these paws will prevent that. They'll grab the piece and they won't go, your piece won't go anywhere. They will mark up your piece, but it's much better than your face. Getting hit in the stomach with a piece of wood. <laughs> um, the last part of the guard here is a riving knife. Now this is a true riving knife, not just a splitter, which is also a different style of guard. So the thing that makes this the riving knife is that it's the same thickness as the blade, and it also can be adjusted into two different positions. So it's always with the blade, and it's in this up position when you want to have the guard on, but when you go to make that non-through cut, you don't need to remove the riving knife. What do you mean by non-through cut? So non-through cut would be if you weren't cutting a piece of wood um, all the way through the thickness. Okay. So if the blade was lower, <clears throat> and you're not cutting all the way through, that is a non-through cut. Ah, good to know. <laughs> In fact, I think we forgot to talk about blade height. And so while the guard is off, can I show you? Yeah. Blade height is adjustable on all table saws, and it's usually controlled by this knob down here. One of the general rules that people go by is that you want half a gullet, which is the space between these teeth, this dip right here, above your workpiece. And so this would be a good height for this piece of plywood. Uh, you can, it's, it has capability to go really high, uh, and that is why it is so handy to have in the shop, because you can cut large stock with it. Uh, but you don't want to keep it high all the time. You want it just a little bit above your workpiece there. You don't want more blade exposed than you, than you need, right. because it just gets more dangerous that way. Yeah. So we're going to throw the guard back on and get set up to make our first cuts with the table saw. All right. I'm excited. All right, so we've got our table saw here ready to make our first cut. Uh, we're going to go through a little pre-cut checklist. Um, the first thing you want to do is make sure you've got uh, your fence set to the right width. We're going to be cutting our piece of plywood here to five inches wide. You've got a scale uh, on, on your table saw, so we'll set our scale to five inches. It's always good to double check. Um, Sometimes the scales can be bumped or yeah. you're using a different uh, thickness blade, that kind of stuff. Just verify that we're at five inches and it's scales may be a, a hair off. Move over just a little bit. And so we're measuring we to the right of the blade. Yeah, we're measuring to the right of the blade. The right is the good piece, the left is the waste piece. There we go. <clears throat> Next thing we want to do, we'll grab our, our piece here. We're going to set our blade height. Um, and we'll use the half gullet rule. Right. I see two gullets. All right, that's perfect. So uh, we've got our uh, blade set to the right height. I have a couple bonus things over here. Um, I'm going to put dust collection on this. Uh, Dust collection is going to vary a little bit saw to saw, uh, but this one fits our shop vac uh, perfectly. And a nice thing to have, but you don't have to have. In fact, it's part of uh, an initiation well, process to not have an outfeed table. Uh, but we're going to use this sawhorse to catch the piece of Baltic birch plywood. Uh, and as it comes off the table, it'll rest on here. Uh, later in this season, if I can do that, we're going to actually build an outfeed table. Great plug. <laughs> All right, uh, the other thing you want to make sure is your work area is clear. You're going to be feeding a board in front of the saw all the way to the back. You want to make sure nobody's back there. You've got a good area. You've got your assistant out of the way. Um, and then lastly, before we turn the saw on, you want to make sure we put on our safety gear. Safety glasses, hearing protection. Why does yours have an antenna? What are you listening to? What'd you say? <laughs> all right. Um, so I'm just going to walk you through how the saw cut's going to work. So you're gonna, when you start it, you're going to position your piece against the fence and push through. Now you notice I'm not in line with the blade, and I'm also not in line with the space between the blade and the fence. This is the most likely spot to cause kickback. So if you stay out of the line of fire, all you have to worry about is your cameraman getting hit. Um, so as we push it through against the fence, we want to make sure we keep our hand uh, in behind the, t the table so it's not anywhere near the blade. And as we push through, we'll go through and then we'll get our hand here. And then to make that last cut, we'll reach for our push stick and push it through to complete the cut. So we're all geared up, we're all safe. We're going to fire up the saw and make our cut.
And there you've got your first rip cut. All right, so we're gonna get reset here and I'm gonna show you how to do a cross cut. We're gonna get started with our cross cuts. First, we put our miter gauge in the miter slot and we bring it back. And I wanna show you uh, one quick check you can do to make sure that at least your 90 degree cuts will be good to go. You turn your handle and you set your miter gauge to 90 and you put a square on the front of it and run it next to the blade. If you see too much of a gap on the front of the blade or the back of the blade, you're not sitting at 90 degrees to the blade. And right now, we're looking pretty good. So I'm gonna press on with this cut. Thank you, Andrew. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll put on our hearing and eye protection. And I'm gonna bring these guards back down. And we do want to remove the fence. We can take that for you. Uh, thank you. As you make this cut, it is important that you really hold on to the piece to the miter gauge. It's not gonna hold itself. So make sure you have a very firm grip here. Uh, of course, not exceeding your fingers past the end of the miter gauge here. I like to wait until the blade has stopped spinning to move my piece back towards me. Uh, and you'll notice that this piece stayed here. Uh, it's not being pushed as you move past the blade because it's been cut off. And so do not touch this piece until the blade has stopped. Because that's a, a good way to get some kickback. All right, and so you can also make other degrees of cuts. Angled cuts. Angled cuts. Uh, if your miter gauge has a little stop like this, you can set that, and mine is at 45, and so I'm gonna leave it there. And as you make this cut, we want it angled towards you, pretty much. Um, and so the, the stock is resting on the table up here. So let's make this cut. and we have a nice 45. Now that we know how to use our table saw and make a couple of these cuts, we're going to show you how to build the absolute best table saw jig you need. A cross cut sled. Stay tuned. <laughs> so to build our table saw sled, which is going to be basically an oversized version of a miter gauge, it's gonna be great for a cross cutting material on the table saw. Uh, it's pretty simple. We have a plywood base, We've got a couple pieces of MDF for the front and back fences. Uh, we'll be using UHMW plastic, which stands for... Ultra plastic. Ultra high molecular weight plastic. Uh, that's what makes it really great for uh, table saw runners. It doesn't expand or contract, and it's also really slick. Uh, you, you can also make your uh, table saw sled runners out of wood or you can buy pre-made uh, metal runners uh, at your local Woodcraft. We actually got most of our material for this build at our Woodcraft. Check it out. So we're here at Woodcraft with John Denny. Uh, we need some parts for our table saw sled. So John, I'm looking for some uh, guide bars for the miter slots on the oh, table okay. saw. Yeah, what I have here, these are uh, zero play. They're made by Microjig. Okay. Um, they're a little bit shorter, but um, what I like about them being zero play, you can adjust. So if you have, you know, not every oh, little bit not of... every saw is identical. Mm -hmm. So this lets you take the little bit of slop out of it, tighten it up a little bit. So um, these yeah. look really cool and adjustable, but I think we want something a little bit longer. Yeah, these are from uh, Incra. Okay. They're part of the Incra system. Um, once again, it has oh. the has the capability mm -hmm. to to tighten up and take a little bit of the slop out if there is any. Sure. Um, in the miter slot itself. Okay. But um, um, another option would be the UHMW, the ultra high weight, ultra high molecular weight. Sure. I call it slick strip. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, so one sort of like a cutting board almost. Exactly, okay. yeah. And what I like about it, it's, uh, 
It's very slick, mm -hmm. so you know very little binding in the. In so the we miter can make our itself. miter bars out of this material. You can make many miter okay. bars out of this piece right here. This is great. You know, it break down to just being a fraction of the cost of, of, of some of the others. I like that. Um, we also need some T track. Oh, Wood River. I have some uh, 24, 36, and 48 inch T track here. Okay. Um, aluminum. I, I cut mine to length with just a, um, a little hacksaw. All right, yeah, so our sled's gonna be 30 inches wide, so grab uh, some of the 36 inch mm -hmm. here. All right, so it looks like we've got a bunch of different kinds of knobs mm -hmm. here. You know, our uh, fence isn't that, that tall, so maybe mm -hmm. something a little bit smaller would work well. Um, maybe something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these are gonna be a little, well, you can see compared to the other, it's gonna take the same size bolt, the okay. thread pitch, but it's gonna be a little bit lower um, profile. All right. Make it a little bit more user friendly, I think. All right, so we'll grab these T-bolts and a knob, and then we still need a tape and a dado set. Oh, I have those right over here. All right. These two are from the Fast Cap, that's the brand, the uh, company. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a standard English, and then I also have it in metric. Okay. Gonna be, all the tapes are gonna be self-adhesive. Oh, that's Make it that's a little bit great. more user-friendly. Yeah. And then also with Craig, I have it in metric, and then in standard English from left to right and right to left. Oh, okay. So you can get it on both sides of your, of I your think blade. That's, that's the way to go here. And so uh, we need that dado stack. Oh, I have a couple here by Freud. I have a six inch. And, a, and an eight inch. Now you're going to be using a contractor saw. Yeah, I think a, a portable on, contractor yeah. saw. Oh, I think the six inch is going to be more than adequate. It's okay. A lot less weight. You're going to have to be turning on the on the smaller size motor. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to give you all the performance you're going to need versus the eight inch. Yeah, I, uh, I can't remember the last time I cut a, a dado that was three inches deep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't want to think about that. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, we just need to grab some plywood and we'll be on our way. Oh, excellent. I'll show you where that is. Awesome. So the first thing we're going to do to start our table saw sled build is cut our runners to size. The trickiest part about fitting your runners uh, is making sure they slide smoothly in your miter slot, um, but also but not too smoothly. Not too smoothly. <laughs> they, we don't want a lot of play in there. Yeah. So it looks like our slot is just a hair over three quarters of an inch wide. Um, so we'll set our fence to three quarters of an inch. It looks like the guard gets in the way. I thought we weren't supposed to take that off. In this case, it would probably be more dangerous to try to do this with the guard on. So we're going to remove the guard okay. and be mindful of the blade. All right. And we don't have to remove the riving knife. No, the riving knife can stay okay. right in there. So set this up for 3 quarters of an inch. We'll check our... A little high on the gullets there. Oh, that was an extreme gullet. Yeah. All right. Set that up. Um, we're going to want that push stick for sure. Push stick. Want to make sure we can actually get that through there. All right. So then we're going to throw our safety gear on. And I'm going to cut this. All right. And we don't have our outfeed uh, saw stand anymore. Um, so as he pushes this, if it is ready to fall, I'm going to catch it. But as if you have somebody helping on the table saw, uh, you don't want them pulling and you don't want them pushing either way. You're really just receiving it uh, so that the doesn't bite in the plate. Control. Yeah. All right, here we go. Ready for this? Moment of truth. What? I'd say that's pretty that's good. good. All right, so we'll cut another one of those and then work on getting our fences glued up. All right, for this front fence, we have two pieces of three quarter inch MDF. We are going to glue and screw them together so they become one piece. But before we do that, we need to make a half inch cut to allow for the T-track, which is going to sit on this front piece uh, and be inset so that they are even. So the T-track is set a half inch down in the front piece. And we're going to mark that on this one. Okay. 
and then we're going to line the fence to the blade with this mark. And now that we have more than one inch in between the blade and the fence, we get to reinstall the safety gear. All right, so we'll put on our safety gear and we'll make this rip cut. And so now we have a really clean surface to mount this T-Track to. All right, now that we have both pieces of MDF squared up and even, we are going to cut the T-Track over on the compound miter saw. I'll take care of that. All right, while Andrew is cutting that T-Track, I am going to get these glued up, and I want to thank our sponsor, Tight Bond, who is making this video possible. Thank you to them, and we're going to get this glued up. So I'm installing the T-Track with these small screws. If you're using MDF, you have to be very careful that you don't over tighten these screws. So use a very slow speed and you should be in good shape. If you're not comfortable using a drill that slow, I would encourage you to use a screwdriver because once these are stripped, there's no going back. So we're just going to pre-drill these runners. We're going to use our countersink bit um, to make sure our screws will be flush in the bottom when we screw them to the bottom of the plywood. So now we can head over to the table saw and get these fitted on the sled. Um, so we're going to take our uh, miter slot runners. Uh, you can see I've countersunk them on the bottom. That should be toward the bottom of the table saw. Throw those in there. And then we're going to use some uh, double-sided tape in the front and back. And those will give us a temporary hold before we screw the slots into the bottom of the sled. All right, so we got that here. So now this is a uh, crucial part. We want to make sure the back edge of the plywood is lined up with the back edge of the table and with our runners here. Get those roughly positioned. All right, and then we put some pressure on the top. And now if we did this right, lift up and the runners will be attached to the bottom. All right. Hey! Cool. Now we just need to screw those in. There you go. And then we get to flip it over and see if it all worked. Get it in the slots. Slide. Beautiful. Can I push? Yeah, it, I feel like it's binding maybe a little bit in here, but, but give that a push. Let's see. I feel it too. Okay. So what we'll do here is, oh, you can actually see there's a little bit of a bulge there. Where was the screw went in? Yep. So we're just going to take our trusty chisel, do a little scraping. Just a little bit of fine tuning there. Do you want to flip that back over and see? I think we're just about there. Okay. Let's see. Oh yeah. It's like <laughs> butter. That's great. Now we get to uh, attach the fences. 
We're just going right. to use screws with those because um, we're going to want to be able to adjust them a little bit after we make our first cuts there. All right. So now that we have our runners attached, uh, we're going to attach our fences. Now we're going to attach them temporarily uh, with just two screws in each fence. That way, after we make our initial cut, we can square up the fences so we're at a perfect 90 degrees to our cut. So Great. let's flip this over. And we're going to try and get these screws right in the center of this front piece. And so we're going to measure an inch and an eighth in with our combination square on all four screws. And these will also be countersunk. Uh, and so we're using a bit that has that countersunk built in. Go a little deeper. All right, so now we can uh, pop our fences under here. Got that one, and we'll need to kind of uh, angle them on the table a little bit. So if we go like so, now we can align and attach. So uh, because we're using MDF, uh, we also want to pre-drill those. Our countersink was a little bit too short, so I've got an eighth inch drill bit here. And we'll just... Now we can drive some screws. All right, so we can flip it back over and uh, make our cut through the fence. Line that up. Cool. All right, so uh, next thing we want to do is raise our blade and make our first cut through the sled. But before we do that, quick reminder, we did uh, put a bunch of screws in both of the fences and we've got some metal here. You want to be cognizant of that. It looks like this back screw. I'm pretty sure I put it right in the middle. Oh, it's it's dead set in the middle. That was a that was a great placement. We're just gonna back the screw out, take it out. Um, the fence is glued together, so that'll be plenty strong. And I think metal wise, elsewhere we're okay. We just want to make sure when we raise the blade, we don't raise it too far and get into the T track. Sure. Pass me my goggles. Absolutely. Thank you. All right, Andrew, if you could pull it that way, I'm going to okay. raise the blade. I think that'll be a good first cut. Okay. That back to you. And then we're just going to cut all the way through the front edge of the sled and all the way through the back fence. So also be careful uh, as the blade comes out the back of the fence. Make we're going to sure hold on either end. Hands of aren't in the way. The crosscut sled. Now we get to check it. All right, I'm going to slide the back of this up against this back fence. And just as it gets to the cut line here, I'm going to look up top. And we have a very small amount that we're off, but enough that I would want to drop the back of this fence, this left side, my left, this way back towards me. Or we can move this side forward. We need to tweak the fence this way. We're going to loosen this screw and just tap this fence. And retighten. And we get to check again. I think we're right on. Awesome. So we should keep in mind we're just squaring the 
front fence, we aren't going to square the back fence. So when you're using this, cr this cross-cut sled, we're just going to be referencing off of this face. Okay. If you wanted to be able to reference off of both faces, you'd also want to square this front face. But most of the work we do is on that side. Let's lock it down. All right. Get some more screws in. So next, we're going to add a couple accessories to our table saw sled. Uh, David here has got um, some self-adhesive measuring tape that'll help us reference um, how our blocks are put on there. And we, we bought tape that goes both left to right and right to left, because that way we can use the sled on both sides of the blade. The other thing uh, we've added to our table saw sled is this sliding stop block. Um, this is something we bought, um, but you can also make your own. Uh, this stop block will help you make repeatable cuts. Finally, uh, once we have those things on, the last thing we want to do is add a safety block at the back, because you can see as the sled moves forward, you've got extra blade exposed there. So we're just going to screw and glue that on and make a couple of cuts. Here we go, we've got our nice five inch block on our table saw. You want to measure that? It's five inches. Awesome. Well, that wraps up this episode. Stay tuned for more great projects and uh, techniques using the table saw, and I can do that coming up this season. See ya.